Alright, good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening class. Uh, this is Mr. Arosena and today we are going to be talking about ideal gases. Alright, so before we start, let's go back and talk about the combined gas law, uh, which if you remember from the last lesson uh, we did, the combined gas law took the following three laws. Uh, Charles law, which related volume and temperature, which you guys did a lab the other day. You guys got to see how volume and temperature are related. Uh, Boyle's law, we did a lab on this as well, where we got to see um, how volume and pressure were related. And then Gay-Lussac's law, where we got pressure and temperature. We didn't see this one in a lab, but I did give you an example of where you could easily see it with just an aerosol can. And we combined these into the combined gas law, uh, which is basically just all three laws kind of mashed together. Um, it looks like this. Okay. Now this uh, combined gas law um, what is it? Uh, relies on having the amount of gas remain constant. Okay. So we kind of uh, we're not including Avogadro's law with this. Okay. Now, when we do include Avogadro's law, we get the following. So now we're going to take Avogadro's law and we're going to pile it in with the combined gas law. And this is what we call the ideal gas law. Okay. So we modify the combined gas law to include Avogadro's law, which is basically relating the moles of gas to the, um, to the volume of gas. Yeah, moles of gas to volume of gas, and we get the following. Okay. So now it looks like the combined gas law, but now we have this N. Okay. So this N, uh, let's make a note here, this N, so these Ns, these are, this is amount of gas in moles. Okay. Amount of gas in moles. Oh, so that's what N is. Okay. Now, we don't traditionally write it this way. Um, traditionally, we write this uh, ideal gas law as follows. Uh, PV over NT equals R. And we change this even further. Usually I'll refer to the ideal gas law as PV equals NRT. Okay, and this R, okay, now remember in all the other gas laws we discussed that um, we had that proportionality constant? Well, it turns out that's what this R is. This is our gas constant. Gas constant. Um, this ideal gas constant. So, uh, so when we're talking about uh, Boyle's law, where um, the Boyle's law uh, pressure and volume, yeah, PV it was equal to some constant, and then with Charles' law, V over T was equal to some constant, and then Gay-Lussac's law, um, P over T was equal to some constant. Well, that constant happens to be R. Okay, that constant happens to be R, and that's what we call the ideal gas constant. And now we can actually calculate what the ideal gas constant is. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, though, uh, usually I'll refer to the gas law in this form, PV equals nRT. It's a little easier to remember uh, in this form. Okay. But it doesn't change what the variables are. P is still pressure. Okay. So this is still pressure. Okay. This is still volume. Uh, this is moles, like I mentioned, and T, this is temperature. And like with any other temperature uh, we talked about, this is temperature in degrees Kelvin, not degrees Celsius, not degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, then again, R is the ideal gas constant. Okay. Yeah, so that's the ideal gas law. It's another equation, but this time it relates everything. Uh, pressure, volume, amount of gas, and temperature all based around what is this ideal gas, gas constant, all based on this, okay? Now, what is the ideal gas constant? All right, uh, first, well, we'll say what's the ideal gas. An, I, I, ah, an ideal gas is basically a gas that obeys the ideal gas equation. Okay, so the equation I just talked about the other day, or the other slide, that's what the ideal gas is. It obeys that equation. Okay, now to calculate R, <coughs> excuse me, 
Uh, to calculate R, we will assume conditions of standard temperature and standard pressure. In atmosphere, this is one atmosphere at zero degrees Celsius. And again, zero degrees Celsius, this is uh, 273 degrees Kelvin. Okay. And at this particular, at STP, if you remember from our moles unit at STP, um, if I have a gas, one mole of that gas will occupy 22.4 liters of volume of space. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna use this we're gonna use this relationship. We're gonna use these values to calculate what um, my gas constant is. Okay, All right. So <coughs> we'll take all those values. Uh, here's our ideal gas equation. <coughs> the ideal gas equation is as follows. We take all the values at STP that we know. So one atmosphere, 273 degrees Kelvin, uh, one mole taking up 22.41 liters of space. Calculate everything, and we get an R value of the following. 0 0.082057, and it'll have units of liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Yeah. So this so this is my ideal gas constant. So ideal gas constant. In and I'm gonna call this in atmospheres. The ideal gas constant actually changes value depending on what for uh, what unit of pressure you're using, because uh, standard pressure in kilopascals is a hundred and one point three kilopascals and then other units of pressure it's a different value as well so if you change the unit of pressure you change the um, ideal gas constant okay let's go through an example of using this equation or using the ideal gas law with the ideal gas constant okay so here's the example uh, we'll determine the amount of gas in a container that contains 340 liters of hydrogen at a temperature of 340 degrees kelvin at a pressure of 0 0.75 atmospheres. Okay, uh, so the amount of gas, amount of gas, okay, this is what we're going to use. This is uh, really finding N or moles. Okay, so we're looking for moles of gas. Okay, my equation. Uh, again, uh, for me, it's easier to remember the ideal gas equation as PV equals nRT. Okay, PV equals nRT. Now let's put in the values that we know. Uh, pressure, we have a pressure of 0 0.75 atmospheres. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a volume of 340 liters of hydrogen. We don't know what N is. Since we're in atmospheres, we're going to use the 0 0.082057. And then the temperature is already given to us in Kelvin, so 340 degrees Kelvin. Okay, right. now we just calculate everything. Uh, let's see. I'm going, since I'm calculating for N, I'll divide both sides by this. So that'll cancel out, that'll cancel out. Bring it over to this side, so 0 0.082057, which will be 340 degrees Kelvin. Okay. And then we calculate out. Uh, the 340 will cancel out 340. Then we get 0.75 divided by 0 0.08, 0 0.75, divided by 0 0.0, oh, wait, I can't do that one, let's see, where is my calculator, 0 0.7, oh. 0.75, divided by 0 0.08, so we an answer of uh, 9, Point one four, I guess nine point one four. Okay, so 
9.14 and since this is going to be this is going to be equals equals n there we go okay some of you might be wondering why can't we just go 340 liters divided by 22.4 because uh, it's not what we did with the moles unit we just took our volume of gas divided by 22.4 uh well remember what i said um, the 22.4 liters is only valid at standard temperature and pressure. Are we at standard temperature and pressure? Here's our temperature. Here's our pressure. Is that standard? No, it's not. So we can't just go 340 divided by 22.4 in this case because we're no longer at standard temperature or standard pressure. Okay, when the, when the pressure and temperature change, the some of the gas the gas properties change at least the the vol the ratio of the ratio of amount and volume change it's no longer 22.4 at different temperatures and different pressures okay. all right now uh, like i mentioned uh, earlier if you change um the unit of pressure then the value of r also changes so for example in kilopascals, um, the value for R is 8.31. Okay. I think one of the assignment questions has you um, prove this. Uh, another semi-popular unit of pressure is called millimeters mercury, otherwise known as the TOR. So, to be quite honest, I'm not actually sure where, what uses this u this unit of pressure. Or I'm not thinking about it. Anyways, when you use this, uh, the value of R um, has the following. Um, so be very, very uh, mindful of uh, what unit of pressure your problem is in, because you might be the, one of the reasons you might be getting everything wrong is because you're using the wrong value of R. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Uh, in different with different um, units of pressure that the ideal gas constant has a different value okay. wait now um, real gases uh, unfortunately do not are not actually ideal okay just <laughs> kind of weird right so the gases we deal with on an everyday everyday basis are not really ideal gases okay part of the reason for that is if you go to really extreme values so for example really really low temperatures um, your gas actually stops becoming a gas and starts becoming more liquid or solid so the ideal gas equation doesn't really work very well for temperatures that are nearing the freezing or condensation point of gases okay similarly at really really high temperatures um, the pressure exerted by the gas becomes really, really large. Okay. Um, similarly, um, when you compress things, um, you can uh, you can cause really interesting things to happen. Okay. Now, outside of those extreme values, though, most real gases will obey the ideal gas equation. So that's kind of why we use it. Okay. So in everyday cases of like between minus 40 and, well, minus 40 is still kind of extreme uh, because we, most places in the world don't get there. But at our everyday temperatures, um, most gases will obey the ideal gas equation. Okay. It's only those extreme values, like either extreme cold, extreme heat, extremely high pressures, extremely low pressures. That's when the gases stop behaving like ideal gases and then strange things happen. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, that's it. All right. Um, your assignment for t this uh, section then is as follows. Okay. And if you guys have any questions, you can ask me when you see me next. All right. See you guys later.